Hello and welcome to the next part of this tutorial series. Today we are going to take a look at randomly spawning asteroids and randomly rotating them. So let's get started. And as always you can get this scene and the end scene from the links down below. Let's get started with making the asteroids. So go to our scenes folder, click on double click on the level 1 and open up the level 1 scene and go to the scene right here and then go to the assets folder and asteroids right here and then prefabs and let's just drag the first one in here and just drag him uh, forward a little bit and look at it so i would say the size is pretty decent we can also like change the sizes so have different sized asteroids in here first off let's make the asteroid move let's right click and create a new script right here and let's call this the asteroid controller double click to open it up and in here we want to move the asteroid so let's make a public float and let's call this the move speed and let's set that equal to something like 20 for now and also make a private rigid body because we're going to move it with the rigid body component rigid body right here and let's call this the rb now in the start function we want the rb to be equal to the get component and call this the rigid body right there and now to move it let's go back to unity and look at what we want to do so here in the scene view we see the asteroid right here and we want to move the asteroid from let's say this position and if I decrease the z-axis, it's go going to move towards the player. And this is exactly what we want to do. Let's go back to Unity and make a new vector 3. Let's call this the movement vector. And set it equal to a new vector 3. And make it 0 on the x, 0 on the y. And then just the negative move speed times the time dot delta time. And now just set the rigid body dot velocity equal to the movement vector. Now if you go to Unity and move the asteroid away from the player to let's say something like 50 so it's far away now we have to drag the asteroid controller script on the asteroid right here on the rigid body component we do not want to use gravity and we want to freeze the uh, position the x and y position because we are just moving the z position right here so le let's leave that at 50 and probably bump up, up the movement speed to something like 400 in the inspector and if i press the play button the asteroid should move towards our player and we can basically just dodge it right now. So if I move out of the way and the asteroid is just going to fly past us right there. Awesome. So next up, let's make the asteroid rotate because for now the asteroid just moves and doesn't look very real. So go back to Visual Studio. Let's make a new private vector 3 and let's call this the random rotation. And in the start function, let's set up the random rotation to something like a new vector 3. And let's make a random dot range and let's set it to something from like zero float to a hundred float and copy this for and copy this one for the x, y, and z coordinates so that we have a random rotation for every single asteroid. So that every asteroid rotates differently and looks kind of more real. And I'm just like a copied version of the other one. So now just go to the transform.rotate in the update function and pass in the random rotation times time dot delta time. Right there. Now we should already have our asteroid rotating and that is exactly what we have if i slow down the movement speed we now see the asteroid rotate one last thing we want to do we want to actually destroy the asteroid after we pass the camera right here so that we don't have like a thousand objects right here just floating around in space if we don't need them let's make a private float and let's call this the remove position z and this is just going to be the z position of the camera.main. So in the start function, the z position is going to be equal to camera.main.transform.position.z right here. And we want to do this because the camera.main is a tag looker, which is not very efficient in Unity. So now in the update function, if the transform.position, if the position of the asteroid is less than the remove position, then we want to destroy the asteroid, the game object right here. This if statement will destroy the asteroid once it moves past the camera, which means that the camera cannot display the asteroid anymore and we don't really need this game object. If I start the game, we will see that the asteroid will disappear after it passes the camera. So right now it's going towards the camera. And in the scene view, now we can see that we pass the camera and the game object disappears right here. No asteroid is in the game view anymore. Awesome. Let's also prepare a public void destroy asteroid function in which we are going to play a particle effect for destroying the asteroid then we are going to disable the movement then disable the colliders and then destroy the game object with a delay but for now we are just going to be destroying the game object 
We are going to use that once we hit uh, an asteroid with our rockets that we are going to implement later in this tutorial. We basically are going to just play a particle effect, some kind of explosion, and we are not going to implement it this tutorial, but we'll leave that open for the next tutorials to come. So this is basically it for the asteroid controller. So now we can go to Unity and drag our asteroid 1 prefab right here, right here to the prefabs folder. So let's make a prefabs folder. Right click and create a folder and call this prefabs. And then just drag and drop the asteroid 1 prefab in here and make it an original prefab. And then we can delete this one. Next up we need some kind of spawn manager for all the asteroids. So create a new script and call this the asteroid manager. And also create a new game object, an empty game object, and also call this the asteroid manager. Drag and drop the asteroid manager script on the asteroid manager game object right here. And now let's drag this to the top. And let's also drag the in-game manager to the top right here. Open up the asteroid manager and this script is just going to spawn in the asteroid prefabs uh, every couple of seconds. Let's make a public game object. And let's make this an array of asteroid prefabs. Let's also make a public float and let's call this the asteroid spawn distance. Let's set that equal to something like 50. For now, that's what we have in the inspector right now. Let's also make a public float, a spawn time. This is just going to be the time, time interval in seconds for spawning asteroids. And let's also make a private float, a timer. And let's set that equal to zero float. And in the start function, the timer is going to be equal to the spawn time so that we spawn the first asteroid right away when the game starts. Now in the update function, we want to add the time.delta time to the timer. And now check if the timer is greater or equal to the spawn time. Then we want to spawn asteroids and we want to reset the timer. Let's make a function for spawning a new asteroid. So let's just make a private void and spawn new asteroid and then just call this function right here. When we spawn asteroids, we have to be quite careful on where we spawn them in the 3D world. So we already have constraints that we use for checking the player right here in the player controller script that I have open. These floats. And what we want to do, we want to have the same floats right here and let's make public floats out of them. Let's make a public float min x, max x, min y and max y right here. Let's also give them a tag hide an inspector. Let's also make this asteroid manager a singleton. So region, let's make a new region, singleton. Then a end region right here. And let's make a public static asteroid manager. And let's call this the instance. Now in the awake function, if the instance is equal to null, then we want to assign the instance to this. And else we want to destroy this game object. Now we can just collapse the region and it's a singleton. Awesome. We don't want these to show, we just want to assign them in the player controller. So go to your player controller script and these floats, right here, the private floats that we calculate, we want to set in the setup boundaries function. After we calculate all of these, set up the asteroid manager. And we just do this by going to the asteroid manager dot instance dot max x is going to equal to max x. And then the same thing for the asteroid manager dot min x is going to be equal to the min x right here. The same thing for the min y is going to be equal to the min y. And the last one is the max y is going to be equal to the max y. Awesome. After we get the values into these variables, we can actually use them in the script. So now when we spawn a new asteroid, we want to get a float new x. And this is going to be a random dot range. Just select a random value from the min x to the max x right here. And let's also do the same thing for a float new y and let's make that a random dot range. And again, the min y and max y. Now let's make a vector 3 for the new spawn position of the asteroid. Let's call this the spawn post. Let's make that equal to a new vector 3. And we just pass in the new x, new y, and here we pass in the position here, the asteroid spawn distance. So this is just the distance from the player. Now we just want to instantiate a new asteroid. So just go to the asteroids array. And now from the array, select a random dot range from the zero index to the asteroid prefabs dot length index right here. This is just going to select the random game object from the array index right here of the prefabs. We are going to have, I think, three asteroid prefabs. So we just select one at random. And now we have to define the spawn position and then the quaternion.identity. 
right here for the rotation. Now go to Unity and set everything up. Go to the Asteroid Manager, unfold the Asteroid Prefabs. Let's make the size 1 since we have just one prefab right now. Go to your UR Prefabs folder and then just drag and drop this element in here. And the spawn time, let's make something like one float and start the game. Once we start the game, we see lots of asteroids just spawning randomly, randomly rotated, and we can just fly around, but they don't do anything right now. So we have to actually implement shooting, and that's the part for the next tutorial. And yeah, if you enjoyed the video, like, subscribe, comment down below what I should do next or what I should do different, and see you in the next one. Bye.